Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 3rd, and it is 7.30 in the evening here in Las Vegas. And I just got the kitchen cleaned up from dinner, loaded the dishwasher, made myself an iced coffee, because I just, I need this iced coffee today. It's another hot day here, 111 degrees. I know there's <clears throat> like the entire country's under some kind of heat wave. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I know the evenings back east and in the Midwest seem to be cooling down a little bit. They're having warm days, cooler evenings. We're having hot days and hot evenings. We had um, we had a lot of rain last week and had a lot of humidity from the rain. And now we just have the heat. The humidity has gone down, but we have heat now. So, um, yeah, um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It, it's, it's a lot right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out why my tablet's the way that it is. Just hold on one second here. Okay. Um, so I've been trying to record this video for days and there's either the phone ringing or, you know, something's happened that I haven't gotten a chance to get this recorded like I had hoped I would. But now things have settled down a little bit and give you some life updates. Um, and I'm finally getting to recording the video of what's on my Netflix and Hulu list of what I have watched, what I'm currently watching and what I look, plan on watching here, you know, moving forward as well as my book list. So we'll get to that here in just a minute want to update you on what's been going on. Um, I received a phone call from my son at work. He was at work on Monday. Um, he works at a grocery store and he's a, uh, sir, uh, customer service clerk. So, um, he bags groceries and he works on the lot bringing, you know, the carts in to the uh, store <clears throat> and um, let me find a uh, color here. Um, he calls me on Monday, I message, I can't remember if he messaged me or called me, that doesn't matter. The point is, is he reached out to me um, that he hurt his foot. Um, he had strapped up a a load of carts and when he went to push it he had you know stepped his give himself a gate of you know a foot gate his feet separated so he could get a good gate to push and when he stepped he apparently stepped wrong and his foot cracked I mean like he heard it and he felt it and it was excruciating I asked him if he wanted me to pick him up and he said no he only had a couple hours left he would work through it so um, I picked him up from work he had to work until 3 or 4 o'clock so I picked him up oh hold on real sec one quick second here currently working on Alice in the White Rabbit House from Diamond Art Club still working on the diamond painting for um, my friend who doesn't like to do squares. I haven't really gotten much done. That'll, you'll, that's, you know, we'll get into that, but back to my son. <clears throat> so, um, I picked him up, brought him home, had him take his sock and, you know, shoes and socks off. And his foot was, was swollen. Um, not as much as what you would think, but it, it was swollen and you could see the bruising starting. 
So um, I had them ice it right away. I have a one of those wedge pillows, the angle. It's a pretty, pretty large pillow um, for him to um, elevate his foot. We got ice packs on it right away. I gave him some ibuprofen. Um, he didn't want to have it looked at right away. He thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe it just hurts because it happened. You know, sometimes you'll, your knee will crack or your wrist will crack and it'll hurt the minute that it happens just because it was really, you know, a hard crack. But then the next day it's fine. So he wanted to hold off. This was Monday. He wakes up yesterday morning, Tuesday morning. Or, I mean, no, this happened. This happened Sunday. I'm sorry. I got my days. I, I don't even know what day it is. This happened. What day, What is today? Because now it's got me all screwed up. One second here. Because, I mean, literally so much. Yeah, this happened Sunday. Monday morning. He wakes up. To get up, you know, to get out of bed. And when he put his foot down on the floor, he couldn't even stand. I mean, it, the pain was so bad. So he told me to call him off work. And I was like, no, nope, I'm not calling you off. I'm not saying you have to go to work, but I'm not calling you off. You need to call off. This happened. This was a work-related injury. He did let um, his supervisor know that it happened <clears throat> on Sunday. So, you know, they were aware that something had happened. And they had said the same thing, you know. They asked him if he wanted to have it looked at right away, and he said no. And they said, well, you do have 24 hours um, to file a claim. So go home, rest it, see how you feel. So when he woke up Monday morning and asked me to call him off work, I said, no, you call. I said, because they're probably going to want you to have it looked at, and they're going to tell you what you need to do since it, was a, it happened on the job. So he calls and they said, yeah, they wanted him to go in and have it looked at, but we had to stop. Um, you might hear my husband in the background. He's in the other room. Um, they he had to stop in, file his workers' comp claim, get his paperwork, and you know, then they would tell him where he needed to go to get it looked at. So we got there around 8. 15, 8.30, and it, we didn't leave there till after 9 o'clock from all the stuff that had to be done. They did a drug test, which is, you know, that's just policy. If there's an injury, they need to do a drug test. So they drug tested him, gave us paperwork. He spoke to a workers' comp nurse that they wanted to send him to a care now, which would have been ideal because we have one right down the road. The girl that I used to babysit, she worked or babysit for, she works there. And that would have been awesome because I could have called, told her we were coming in, and she would have moved him to the head of the line. So we wouldn't have had to sit there forever. But now his store manager said that she needed him to go to this other place. That's where they send all of their workers' comp claims. So they already have all this stuff on file. If we would go to the care now, they would end up sending him back to the store anyway, and then they would send him to, so we're just like, all right, fine. Of course, it's on the other side of town. So we get there, walk in, and the place is packed. I mean, packed. I go up, tell them, you know, we're here, we have a workers' comp injury. <clears throat> our work-related injury. She hands me this packet of paper. This folder. It was like full. It was like nine, nine, ten pages. <sighs> sit, and she tells me, go sit down, fill this out. Once you get it filled out, come up with your ID, and we'll check you in. And I'm like, well, why can't you just take my ID now and get us in the system? She said, that's not how we do it. Fill out the paperwork, then we'll check you in. So now in the meantime, because we've never been there before. So now in the meantime, all these people are coming in, getting checked in and sitting down and 
we're having to fill out this paperwork. It took us like 45 minutes to fill out the paperwork. Now, when I ask her, at that time, I'm like, well, how long are we looking at? Because I had an appointment yesterday that I needed to go to. So I needed to know what, if I was going to have to cancel my appointment or call and tell them I'd be late getting there and we you know, kind of reschedule it, but for the same day, if they could. She's like, well, it's an injury, so about three hours. Sorry, bumping this. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. He is in pain. And we have to sit here for three hours? She said, yeah, probably about three hours. I'm like, oh. so I was like, fine. <clears throat> Definitely not happy. So we go sit down, fill out the paperwork. And like I said, it took us 45 minutes to fill it out. Took it up to her, gave her my ID. And she said, there's five people ahead of you that we've got to check in. How long do you think it takes to check in somebody? I mean, you take their stuff, you type it in the system, done, right? Wrong. Those five people ahead of us, it took them two and a half hours to check it in. Now I told her, I said, but I told her, I said, all right, well, once you get us checked in, we're going to go grab some lunch. I didn't even have anything to drink with me because I didn't know that this was going to, you know, when we left here, I didn't know what all was going to happen. I didn't think about it. It was early. I'd been awake all of like 45 minutes when we needed to go. I had half a cup of coffee and then that was it. <clears throat> so we're sitting there. All right, I told her, I said, so if I leave, if we leave to go get something, can you call me when there's only like one or two patients ahead of us? Because we're just going to drive down the road so I can be back in like five or 10 minutes. So when there's like one patient ahead of us, can you call and we'll come back? She goes, oh yeah, we can do that. It's like, okay, cool. Somehow, Julia had escaped. So I'm sitting there and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting for them to come you know, call our name so we could come up and give them and you know, let us know that we were checked in or to check us in. Cause I assumed when they checked them in, they called us up, they asked us questions. And then they said, all right, you're checked in. I'll just wait till, till we call your name to send you back. This was at like 10 till 10 when I gave her, you know, the ID and she said she would check us in and there was five people ahead of us. At 11.30, 11.15, I told my son, I said, go up and see, tell them, you are in pain. He couldn't even put his foot up because there was nowhere to put it up on. So his foot's throbbing. He's uncomfortable. We'd already been sitting there for about an hour and 25 minutes waiting for them to check us in. And she said, you have two people ahead of you. We're like, what? How can there still be two people ahead of us when it's been an hour and 25 minutes and when... You, at that point, you told us there was five people. So it took an hour and 25 minutes to check in three people. And we still have two ahead of us. So, and the fact that you never, we, this whole time we could have left, gotten something to eat, come back twice. So, we're sitting there. Fortunately, they had the little small, those little bottles of water. I went and grabbed two of them, and they weren't even cold. They were just sitting there, but it was wet. And at that point, that's all I needed was something that was wet. So, um, next thing you know, they call his name. So he goes up to get checked in. And, oh, no, well, you're coming back to a room. I was like, oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. They called me on my phone. That's what it was. They called me on my phone. They said, okay, you're in, you're going to be the next patient to come back. And I was like, okay. She goes, how soon can you be there? Be here. And I was like, I'm in the lobby. I'm sitting here waiting in the waiting room. I said, I've been waiting for somebody to tell us to come up to get checked in so we can leave and go get something to eat. And she goes, oh yeah, he's been checked in for 45 minutes. Oh, I was, I was livid. 
So we go in the back. <clears throat> At this point, it's like 12.15. 12, between 12.15 and 12.30. And um, oh, I was so mad. Because <clears throat> the whole time he's sitting there going, Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, and I'm hungry too, you know. I'm like, Steve, we can't do anything. Can't leave. I couldn't even leave him and go get something and bring it back because he wasn't he's a minor. So I couldn't leave him alone. And um so we go in the back, you know, they put us in a room, she takes his blood pressure, you know, all of his vital signs, ask what happened, we explain it. She said, Okay, well the doctor will be in about ten or fifteen minutes. I'm like, okay. So he actually came in. I told her, I said, can, he, can you ask him to speed it along? Because I had to be at my appointment at, I mean, at a quarter till two. And, of course, I didn't want to have to bring him with me since he was in pain. I wanted to be able to get him home so he could get his foot up. So by the time we you know, leave there, I was going to, after we were finished, we were going to have to take the paperwork back to his employer and then bring him, take him home. And then I was going to have to get to my appointment, which was the opposite direction of where we already were. So I told her, I said, can you please ask him to speed it up? Because I really need, need to get to this appointment. So she said, yeah, it'll be about 15 minutes, but I'll see if he can get in here sooner. And he did, fortunately. And he was a really nice doctor. But um, he comes in and he asks, you know, hi, Mrs. Brown. I'm Dr. So-and-so. What's, what's, what are we here for today? And I was like, actually, it's my son. He's here. I said, I heard it work. So then he turns to my son and asks him what happened. And, you know, my, son, my son's not real good at explaining things, you know. So he starts telling him what he did, and the doctor's kind of not understanding it. And I was like, all right, let me explain it. Because then I could actually show him, you know, the way that he showed me, my son showed me. So explain it and everything, and I start using no medical terms because, okay, I, I have a medical assistant background, as well as I have a 20 year, 20 plus year medical background. I was a nurse's aide, worked in hospitals, nursing homes, hospice care, doctor's offices. I know the terminology, I know the anatomy. So I told him, you know, that when he came home and I looked at his foot, that it appeared that the pain and the swelling was the metacarsal, second and third metacarsal of his right foot. And then I was like, no, wait a minute, left foot. And he was like, oh, are you a nurse? I was like, no, I wish. But I said, no, I'm a medical assistant, um, unemployed medical assistant, but, um, medical assistant and 20 years in just medical field as, in, as a whole. And he said, oh, okay. He said, so you have already have a pretty good idea. He said, do you think there's a fracture? And I'm like, I really don't know. With the swelling, it's hard to tell. I said, I felt around. I didn't feel anything. I said, so that kind of made me think that there's a, if it is a fracture, it's like a stress fracture or um, a... Um, no, a hairline fracture. And I said, so I really don't know. I said, okay, so let's go ahead and do some x-rays. He said, when the x-rays come back, he said, you and me will go take a look at them. I'm like, okay. And I said, how long will I be? And he said, this is going to go, the order's going to go right over to x-ray. He says, the tech's available. They'll get them in right now. I said, okay, perfect. So there's just a couple minutes that we waited. And the x-ray tech came and got him. Took him, got the x-ray. Um, as soon as the x-ray was done, we're like minutes. Um, and the doctor came and got me. We went and took a look, and he asked me what I seen. I told him what I seen. He said, that's exactly what I see, too. There was no hairline fracture. There's no fracture at all. All the bones were, were perfectly formed. Everything looked, there was no abnormalities as far as the bones go. Um, there was some inflammation 
at the bottom of the second and third flange, which is just the bottom of the, the, the toe. Um, so there was some inflammation there. He said, hold on one second, please. Okay, sorry, I'm back. <clears throat> he said, uh, um, so there was some inflammation. We could see the swelling, you know, around the foot. There was some mild bruising. Um, he, he said that the, the inflammation was probably, the most the majority of the inflammation was probably that, like the sheath, the protecting coating, the cover that was on the ligaments may have torn away from the ligament, which would kind of almost be like if you had a blister and you pop the blister and that layer of skin came off and you had the raw exposed flesh that it burns and stuff. That's kind of how it would be like with the ligament. So um, he said it was going to go ahead. It would take 24 hours for the report itself to be looked at. They would send it over to the um, radiologist specialist that is able to, you know, that knows more of the reading of these. It can see a little more depth than we can or we could. So he said it would take send it over there. But they were going to go ahead and put him on light duty. They wrapped his foot. They said that wearing a boot would probably cause more, you know, um, discomfort and really wouldn't be beneficial. So just put an ace around it, gave me an extra ace, put him on light duty, gave him a prescription for 800 milligram ibuprofen, and just continue to ice it. So... We left there, it was around one o'clock, went back to his employer, turned in his paperwork. She said that she would uh, give us a call in a couple hours to let us know, you know, as far as light duty, what they could have him do, and when they would get him back on the schedule. So <clears throat> we uh, Went and grabbed something to eat. We just got some French fries and something to drink at Carl's Jr. because we were dying of thirst and hunger. Went to the employer, dropped it off, picked a few things up at the store, came home, I made dinner. He receives the phone call that they were going to have him start back to work today on like duty, just doing like cleaning the store. So he cleaned, you know, I, we didn't know what it was going to be until today, but he'd work eight to four. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. He has a follow-up with the doctor on Friday. Um, but So, I kept an eye on him a lot last night, up and down the steps getting him ice packs and something to eat, you know, something to drink, and repositioning his leg, and then he wanted to go ahead and get a shower, so then I had to take the wrap off and help him you know, with that, he was able to, you know, get in and out of the shower by himself, thank God. Because um, I really, you know, he's, he's 16, he's, you know, a man, so I really don't want to have to, you know, go to those depths. But fortunately, he was able to do that himself. After his shower, he got dressed, came down, I, I wrapped it back up. You can see the bruising becoming, you know, more and more. And the swelling, of course, was increasing. I gave him an 800 milligram ibuprofen and I said, you know, go to bed, get a good night's sleep. Um, so got up this morning, helped him get um, ready for work, getting his wrap, you know, rewrapping his foot and took him to work. <clears throat> Needless to say, I was exhausted last night after he went to bed. I mean, we literally left here at like 10 till 8 yesterday morning and we didn't get home till almost 2.30 in the afternoon. And my back was killing me because sitting in those chairs at that um, urgent care clinic that they sent us to just wrecked my back. So I, I had all intent purposes of being in bed by like 10 o'clock. That didn't happen. I didn't make it into bed till like after 11. And I'm sleeping with ice packs under my, I slide, I have these two ice packs. They're, they're like a, they almost feel like the back of 
the kind of an echo canvas, what the material feels like, but they're gel packs and they stay soft. So they, you know, they're pliable, real pliable. Um, I'm taking those. I mean, they're like, they're only about this wide, about this, they're from Walgreens, you know, reusable. And they're nice and thin. I mean, they're, they're really thin. I slide them in my pillowcase, in between the pillow and the pillowcase. And I actually sleep on them. My head and face is on that because I just, I cannot, I can't deal with this. I'm so hot. I'm sleeping in like short shorts, like sleeping short shorts and a tank top or you know, tank top and underwear. I have a ceiling fan blowing on me. I have an oscillating fan like right next to the bed. Like if I roll over and like my pillow were to fall off the bed, it would literally knock the fan over. That's how close it is. And I get, so I got those ice packs in the pillowcase. And then I have two gel packs, also very pliable, about this long, about, about this wide. They lay side by side in a towel and fold over and I lay on them. But it, my body heat is so, or my body temperature is so high that they, they, they're supposed to last like two or three hours. Yeah, they last about an hour. They last long enough for me to fall asleep. And as soon as I fall asleep, I get woke up because now they're warm. So now I'm uncomfortable. So it was all night tossing and turning and you know going in and checking on him, making sure that he has his foot elevated, that he didn't doesn't have it bent a certain way. I didn't get no sleep last night. I had to get up, take him to work. <clears throat> Um, I dropped, he likes to be there early, so I dropped him off at like 25 after 7. <sighs> Came home, had to make some phone calls because he starts school Monday. So he's going back. Um, he's in charter school. We didn't change that. So he's still in charter school. They do have face-to-face -face this year. Uh, and in charter school, anyone who is new to my channel, um, his charter school, they meet face-to-face -face one day a week normally for four hours and it's the same day each week you, you pick your day and that's your day for the year um but normally it's either 7 to 11 or 12 to 4. this year because of you know, everything that's going on they reduced it to three hours so it's either 8 to 11 or 1 to 3. I mean, one to four. Yeah, because they wanted to have that time to clean. They were supposed to have a nighttime course offered, but there wasn't enough people interested in it. They needed at least 50 students, and they only had like 20. So they, they're not going to have that. But my son had opted to go ahead and um, have that face-to-face -face that one day. Because though he's a junior, he's graduating this year. He's, he's graduating early. So he thought, okay, for that last year, I'll go in and I'll do the face-to-face. -face. Well, with our numbers increasing, um, we are in a hot zone here in Las Vegas. Well, here in the entire state in Nevada, but Las Vegas is one of the government hot zones. Um, or red zones for infection. Or, um, you know, um, contracting whatever so we decided he decided that he just feels more comfortable just doing the um, all online so I had to call his um, counselor I can't even think right now I had to call his counselor and um, let them know that he wanted to change that which in turn changed his schedule because he only needs six and a half credits and two and a half of them are um, electives so one of his electives was independent living and that has to be done face to face because they you know, teach you how to cook and sew and you know pay bills and you know all those things and then they do field trips like once a month which they said the field trips probably wouldn't happen but they still need the face to face and I was like yeah no he doesn't need to do that that's not a course he needs. I said, because I can teach him all those things. I cook. I clean. I know how to pay bills. You know, 
that's something that I can teach him. I said I'd rather him, you know, be able to do his work from home. So they changed his schedule from independent living to independent studies, which this here is the course that will um, prepare him for his ACTs that he will take at the end of February, beginning of March. So I got his schedule changed, got that taken care of. So starting on Monday, he will go back to um, having class, even though he um, only would have one day a week that he's, he'll have to get on um, every Tuesday, he'll get on um, Google Meets with his teachers. They'll go over his assignments for the week because all of his assignments are posted online, they're accessible. If he needs any help with anything, they could help him then. But Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, it's you know he's working on his own. Of course, his teachers are still there's they still have their schedule for Google Meet. So if he needs any help, they're available. But he'll be working and going to school, and then you know beginning on Monday. <clears throat> so just. You know, trying to get that all prepared for. I actually have to take his computer in and have it looked at, make sure everything's running smoothly with that. If not, he'll be using my computer, which kind of, um, if he's working during the day, that's fine because he'll do his schoolwork at night. But if he's, you know, doing this during the day, we're going to be kind of fighting over my computer, which means doing videos um, will make it a little more difficult. I'll still get them done. I just don't know when. You know, it'll be daytime or nighttime. But his schoolwork is a priority. Um, as much as I want my channel to be a priority, his schoolwork is the priority. So we got that going on. Um, so that's just been, you know, today's Tuesday and I'm already exhausted. I already feel like I've been through an entire week. Um, I already know Friday I've got that appointment for his follow-up so I can plan on being there all day again. Thursday morning, I have an orthodontist appointment, um, which that won't be long at all. <clears throat> it's just an orthodontist appointment this time. Next month, it'll be dentist appointment and orthodontist appointment on the same day. Well, it'll be orthodontist appointment in the morning. They'll go take everything off, you know, the wires and stuff. I'll go get to the orthodontist or dentist, see the hygienist, I'll clean my teeth, and then I'll go back the same day to the orthodontist, hopefully, or the next day to have my stuff put back on. So, like I said, already this week, I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm hot. Fortunately, I was smart and I made pasta the other day and I made too much, so we've had leftovers. We finished them tonight. So, the past three days, I haven't had to cook. Which, as much as I love cooking it, with everything else that's been going on, I'm glad I haven't had to. But Friday, I went on a cleaning spree and I cleaned my house literally from top to bottom. Vacuumed, or well, oh, excuse me. I vacuumed and dusted did downstairs. I took everything off my countertops and I completely wiped them down, sanitized them. Hold on one second, my son needs me. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. My son needed his foot wrapped and wanted me to make him something to drink. And then and my dog needed walked. And usually my son walks in, but now um, I am. So um, I had to walk the dog and I hadn't checked the mail for the day. So anyway, um, I left off about the house cleaning. So yeah, I cleaned everything downstairs. Um, I have one bathroom downstairs and then I have two bathrooms upstairs. So when, after I got everything done downstairs, loaded the dishwasher, unloaded the dishwasher, all that. And upstairs I washed bedding and um, towels and cleaned the two bathrooms upstairs. I have tile in both bathrooms and my laundry room. So, and I have a Bissell Crosswave for hard, hard, hardwood and hard, you know, hard tile or hard floors. And it 
mops it and dries it at the same time. Love it. Um, so I did that after we folded the clothes or the towels, put them away, put the sheets on all the beds. I was just like, I put my AirPods in, turn on my Spotify. I have 109 songs in my um, library and I listen to at least 80 of them just going to town. So I got a lot done on Friday. I made up, I paid for it on Saturday. And then Sunday, you know, with my son and everything, it, it's just been, it's been crazy. <clears throat> and I was frustrated yesterday when I was at the clinic because I brought my tablet so I could read. I thought if I'm gonna be sitting for a while, I might as well take advantage of that and read. Here, you know, they had no internet. And here on this particular tablet, I have two. I have my Kindle Fire, and then I have my Samsung Galaxy. When I download my books from, Kin from Amazon, I sometimes forget to, when I, mean, I make the purchase, it goes to the Kindle, but it doesn't automatically download. So I have to download them you know, manually. And I completely forget to do that. So I go to read and not one of my books was actually downloaded on the tablet because I don't read off my tablet very much. Usually I, I watch Netflix on my tablet and read off my Kindle Fire. So needless to say, since I had no internet, I couldn't read on my tablet. I did have my phone, I have an iPhone. I could have read on that, but I was very limited on how much battery I had left, so I was really trying to save the battery since I didn't know how long I would be. And there were plugs, but they were far away from where we were, where we were sitting, and there was no available seats where the plugs were. So yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't really do anything except for sit there. Um, there were three books that downloaded on the Kindle app, but they were samples. Two of the books, I had already actually read the book, the sample was still there. So I tried reading, uh, I just couldn't get into it. So yeah, that didn't happen. So now we caught up on the life things. Um, let me get a um, symbol here and we can get to the meat and the potatoes now. So Let's go ahead and do Netflix first. My Netflix list is long. Chances are I'm never going to watch some of them, but, you know, because when I first put them in my um, list of things to watch at the time, it seemed I was interested, possibly. They seemed some, like something I might want to watch. But now, you know, that I look back, it's like, yeah, I don't think so. Or I've heard things that other people have seen it and they didn't care for it. So I haven't taken it off my list because I don't always base my opinion on something based on somebody else's. So I might, one night might come and I don't know what to watch, I might give it a chance. Some of these things I have already watched if it's a movie, but they stay on my list because they're easier to find when I want them been a lot of new things that have come um, to Netflix and a lot more that's coming. So um, let's go by what's already in my list and then we'll look and see if there's anything I might add to it. So there's a new, there's a new movie that has Haley Lou Richardson, Cole Sprouse, and Moises, I think that's how you say it, Mo Mo Moises Arias. Um, it's called Five Feet Apart. I have not watched it, but it is um, first on my list to watch. Um, I'll probably watch that, um, like if I'm crocheting, which that, we're gonna get to that, that's another story. Um, because I really wanna be able to focus on that and not have to like, really keep my eyes off of it. I don't know, but I definitely want to watch that. The 
um, description is it's a teen, a teen with cystic fibrosis. She accepts her daily routine and challenges hospital protocol when she falls for a fellow patient. Um, and that fellow patient is Cole Sprouse. Anybody who watched, um, used to watch, um, I can't think of the name of the show that he was in on, it was Disney. Um, I cannot think of the name of it. Uh, the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. He was one of the characters because he has a twin. So his twin brother and him were Zach and Cody on The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. But he is also one of the main characters on Riverdale on Freeform Channel. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. So that is definitely a movie that I um, look forward to watching. Then they have the Fear Street um, series that have recently come on to Netflix as Netflix originals. There's Fear Street Part 1, 1994, Fear Street Part 2, 1978, which I don't know why they did it that way. Wouldn't it have made, didn't 78 come before 94? Wouldn't that have made more sense? But then it goes even worse because their Part 3 is from 1666. They're dyslexic. I, I don't understand the concept, but okay, whatever. Um, for part one, it's um, after a series of brutal slayings, a teen and her friends take on an evil force that's plagued their notorious town for centuries. Welcome to Shady Side. Um, I know another creator, um, she's watched these. Um, if I remember correctly, she said they were like, okay, at least that the particular one was. So it's on my list. Not sure if I'm actually going to watch it. I don't really like the massive horror things, um, but who knows? The second one, which is Fair Street Part 2, 1978, uh, the description is, in the cursed town of Shadyside, a killer's murder spree terrorizes Camp Nightwing and turns a summer of fun into a gruesome fight for survival. So I kind of think these are like B-rated type shows. I don't know. And then Fear Street Part 3, 1666, is thrust back to 1966. Oh, how did that happen? Hold on. I turned off the lights. My foot got caught on the... Hang on, I want to put this up here. Maybe I won't get caught anymore. One second. I think my son tight, tightened this up just a little much. I need to get some slack. Hold on. Oh, oh shoot. Ah. Ah. What did I just do here? Did I break something? No, I did not. Okay. And now we have light. <clears throat> but I gotta dim it. It's a little much. Okay. All right. Technical difficulty adverted. So, thrust back to 1966. Dina learns the truth about Sarah Fear. Back in 1994, the friends fight for their lives and she decides future. So, I have those three on my list of things to watch. <clears throat> those are the first three things. Um, I also have, I am a Twy Hard fan. So I do have the Twilight Saga on there and I actually started watching one of them the other day. It's mindless. I can, you know, diamond paint, I can crochet, um, whatever, while listening to it because I have seen it a bazillion times. I do still sometimes find myself doing more watching than diamond painting or crocheting, but that's okay too. <clears throat> um, there is 
season one, I think it was only the first season. Um, it's called Sophie, a murder in West Cork. So this is a murder that took place in Ireland. And uh, it is a series. Um, this is season one. I've, there's series, season one. I've seen episode one. Wasn't, wasn't real thrilled, but and sometimes it takes a couple episodes to really get into it. I started episode two, and um, I haven't finished it yet. I don't know. That that's kind of like up in the air on if we're, I'm going to continue with it. But um, the description on this is um, in 1966, a woman is found brutally murdered. <coughs> excuse me, brutally murdered near her rural, rural Irish home just before Christmas, leaving her tight knit community in shock. So that's where that is. I have the trials of Gabriel Fernandez. I, you know, anybody who knows me knows I love true crime. Um, so this also has, um, this is a, it, there's multiple seasons. Let's see how many seasons there are already. Let's see, it, it is a limited series. So this is, season one that I'm on right now. Let's see. I don't know if there was any that may have, they may not have continued because I haven't seen anything where season two has come out yet. But a boy's, a boy's brutal murder and the public trials of his guardians and social workers prompt questions about the system's protection of vulnerable children. So, um, I might not watch that one. I'm not sure because married children, abuse of children and animals is very difficult for me. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, the next one, an imperfect murder. Um, this here is, I like how they're really not saying anything about it. I started watching it and I don't remember um, what it was about. It's haunted by a nightmare involving her abusive ex-boyfriend and actress begins to question her reality and whether the incident took place. This stars Sienna Miller, Alec Baldwin, Charles Grodin, and um, yeah, I started watching it. There was only six minutes remaining, and it must have been quite a while since I watched it because I don't remember it. Um, so yeah, it's just a movie. Next one, Murder Among the Mormons. This does have, it is a series from which you started, you know, came out this year. It is another limited series. I think it has, we're into three episodes so far. Uh, prosecutors and police roll through possible bombing suspects. Later, a key breaking, breakthrough puts a curious new spin on the case. Um, behind her eyes, you know, I started watching this. I thought I was really going to like it. I don't know. Um, it's another one that I am torn on. Again, I've heard good things and bad things again about it, but, um, this is from 2021. Again, another limited series. I'm not sure how many episodes there are, but right now there's six episodes on Netflix. Um, Let's see. I gotta go back. I don't know why this doesn't actually give us the um, the synopsis the right way that it should. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But um, hang on here. Um. Yeah, it doesn't really give a synopsis about this or a, you know, a description. It just like starts it. And some of them do and some of them don't. But I don't know, I think I was in the second or third episode and um, 
Yeah, not feeling it. Might go back to it. I don't know. I have The Sinner. Um, this was from 2020. And in a small town, in a small town, anyway, in a small New York town, a haunted detective hunts for answers about perplexing crimes while wrestling with his own demons. There are, um, let's see, there are, how many seasons? There are three seasons, three seasons in this. I have watched none of them yet. <clears throat> There's Firefly Lane, I have that on my list. Best friends Tuli and Kate support each other through good times and bad with an unbreakable bond that carries them from their teens to their 40s. This year is also from 2021. And right now there's currently only one season on Netflix. We have Crime Scene. Um, the mystery deepens for season one. The crime scene, the mystery deepens, did a crime occur? The obsessed descend of the Cecil, hoping to solve the case and tumble down the rabbit hole of conspiracy. This here is about the Cecil Hotel in, I think it is in Los Angeles. That is a hotel where a lot of famous people stayed back in like the 30s and 40s and 50s. Um, a lot of murders that took place at the Cecil. It is claim people claim that it is haunted. Um, so yeah, there's there's been a lot of disappearances, a lot of um, strange paranormal activity that's taken place. There are a lot of stories, a lot of books about this. So that is on my watch list. And there are a total right now. There is only one season. And there are four episodes thus far. Briggerton. Oh my, I watched the first season. There, I cannot wait for season two. It should be coming here soon. I'm not sure when exactly this came out in 2020. It was a 2021 Emmy nominee. Um, <clears throat> I guess this is going to be where there are a multiple, multiple amount of children in this rich, you know, like royal family. It's not like royal per se. I mean, they're royal, yes, but they're. It's back in the day where you know, in the eighteen hundreds, where um, wealthy families are looking to marry off their daughters for prearranged marriages into equally if not more so wealthy families um, I'm not real good with explain, you know, with the explaining descriptions when it's not really there but absolutely loved it cannot wait for season two the first season was um, the daughter's name was Daphne, and the next season um, goes with the next daughter, but they go through all the daughters. Absolutely obsessed with that. The Duke in this, easy on the eyes, absolutely easy on the eyes. So I would definitely recommend that. There is a movie called Unfriended, 16, who so cyberbullying drove their classmate to kill herself, became the target of an online stalker with a lethal agenda. That is a 20, movie from 2014. Darling. Teens find themselves in a fight for their lives inside a haunted house when a sinister spirit crashes their Halloween party. It's from 2017. Kind of almost reminds you of something from the 80s that we would have watched as teenagers growing up. All right, Virgin River. Obsessed. 
I am obsessed with Virgin River. I was so worried um, after season one that it wasn't going to come back. Um, when it did come back, and when season two did, what well, was released, there was only like a couple episodes. So I was really concerned. Because um, that tends to happen a lot, even with regular primetime TV. You find something that you really like, you hear a lot of people raving about it, and then you get one season and they, they claim that it wasn't watched enough. But then there's shows like Empire that ran for how many freaking seasons? And I was just like, yeah, no. Uh, the Simpsons. How long has The Simpsons been on? Are you kidding me? And they keep renewing them. Um, even like on TV Land, that um, some of the stupid shows that they have on TV Land, they keep renewing and they are absolutely stupid. You hear people talk about how how ridiculous they are, but they keep renewing them. It seems like all they're doing is catering to the younger generation, and they forget the older people like to watch TV too, and they take those shows off, but then they leave, you know, what suits the younger generation. And, you know, there's a huge generation gap, especially, you know, we all know that, but especially where TV is concerned, and they feel, oh, yeah, older people... They don't need to watch TV. Uh, no, no, we don't just eat dinner and go to bed at six o'clock. We like to sit and watch TV in the evenings too. You know, so can we can we have stuff that we like to watch as well, or are we just going to cater to the millennial generation? You know, I I just don't understand it. I don't know why they have to take everything off. There's enough hours in the day. That they can put things on to suit everybody but anyhow virgin river absolutely love this it is in the third season um why am i downloading i don't want to download um so let's see here if they can give me it almost seems like i'm better off trying to bring up the description on um, Google instead of on the actual site where you think that that's where we should get the information but for some reason I can never find it if I've already started watching the show um, okay so let's find it here And why can't they give a description in the right spot? Let's see if it gives you here. This came out in 2019. So seeking a fresh start, a nurse practitioner, Melinda Monroe, moves from Los Angeles to a remote northern California town and is surprised by what and who she finds. So anybody who has not seen this, so this girl moves, this woman moves um, from L.A., as it said, to Virgin River, which <clears throat> I'm not quite sure if this is supposed to be a fictitious town or because I know there's Virgin River in Utah. Um, but she's trying to escape kind of like her past. Um, I don't really want to go into too much detail and give it away for people who want to watch it and have not seen it yet. But she she needs a new start she's dealt with a lot of heartbreak and she's just she needs a new place to kind of escape from or escape to and you know find herself and deal with you know everything that's going on so she gets there and of course any place that you go to in the world is different than la anybody who's been to la and then have come from like a small town or more of a laid back area. You move to LA and it's culture shock. Everything is so different. This is no different. Well, it's actually much different because this is even more of a culture shock where she goes, they're kind of like off the grid. I mean, it's just like really out where it's a, a small close knit community but it's like really 
out in the in nature. So that's a, that right off the bat's a huge shock to her. Um, the doctor that she works for, there's one doctor in town. He's the doctor. Everybody comes to him. He has not had a nurse or anything. He this, and that's the way that he wants it. He just wants to do his practice his way. His wife is actually who asked, you know, reached out to have somebody come and help. And he was not having it. Her, the doctor was just like not having it. He was not happy about it, but he was forced into it. A lot of things happen, but, you know, of course there's, it, it's a combination, you know, it's a drama. So there's, there's heartbreak and there's laughter and there's happiness and there's sadness and there's complicated relationships and there's, you know, like anything, you got your good guys, you got your bad guys. And so it, it's a bunch of everything. Um, it's definitely worth watching if you like, I think of Deb, was it Deborah Mahome, McHale, where she has her show on, um, Hallmark Channel. I don't know if it's still on, but it was. Um, let me see here. Author. McComber. <clears throat> That's what it is. Deborah McComber. Where she had the TV. Well, she wrote the books, but then they also did the um, TV series. She, first she wrote the books. Then they did the TV series of... Um, I'm so sorry. I am just, I, I started to watch it. Cedar Cove. Kind of, it, it has that kind of feel to it. Um, absolutely love it. They're in the third season. I am, oh, let's see. I am, yeah, where's the third season? Season three. Okay, let's see season two. So yes, I did watch all of season two. And I am in the mm, wow! I really I'm in see or episode eight of season three, and right now they have ten ten episodes for season three. So yeah, I'm almost done with that so, um, season three, and we'll see how long it takes for them to get season four if it continues. All right, there's just a lot of, um, you know, like true crime things on here. Um, if you're interested in all of those that I have on the list, leave it in the comments and I can go ahead and message, you know, I can list all of them in there. But there's like so many. Of course, I watch Riverdale. Absolutely love it. Cannot wait for season, what is it, season six, I think, to air. I think that's what season it is that we're waiting for. They have four seasons on here so far. It is based off of Archie Comics. And again, absolutely love that. Um, I am still trying to get through Criminal Minds. On Criminal Minds, I am on season 12, episode 4. And there are only um, 13, let's see, 12. Yeah, there's only 12 seasons on Netflix. They did not choose to add the remaining three seasons. So I will have to find those on Hulu. But I absolutely love Criminal Minds. It's just at the point where I was watching it at night before I went to bed. And, and then I was dreaming. And I thought, yeah, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I do want to watch Friday Night Lights. Um, that is something that I never did watch. And I don't know why I didn't watch it. Um, so that is on my list to watch. The Originals is also on my list to watch, as well as Supernatural. Vampire Diaries. I watched the first seven seasons. Well, first six seasons plus two of the seventh, into the seventh, two episodes of the seventh season. Um, I still need to watch season eight. Um, I kind of didn't like where it went. I was hoping for a different direction. And I don't know, maybe it turned in the eighth season. I did not, I've not wanted anybody to tell me. 
So I'm, I'm still kind of in lost in that. Stranger Things. My son started watching it. He did not care for it, but it is on my list that I do want to check that out as well. Okay, so the upcoming um, and you know the new arrivals. <clears throat> what is coming to um, Netflix? So August first, the Five Feet Apart. That one just was. Um, you know, it was put on. Uh, let's see here. I really don't see anything else. Yeah, everything so far that I know of um, is already here. Let's see. Go home here and see if there's any coming students. I think at this point, all the coming, the new things that are coming have already there's nothing new so um i'm waiting for prime time before i go to my books waiting for prime time television to come back we loved watching um the resident and new amsterdam and i'm going to look this up real quick before i pick another color to see if they decided if they were going to renew these things or these uh, shows um <clears throat> and when they're going to start because, you know, again, I'm sick and tired of them taking something off air that we enjoy watching. Before long, we literally won't have anything on television to watch. Um, so, yes, The Resident Season 5 premiere date is set for September 2021. So at least I know that we will have Season 5 of that. Um... <laughs> I love the medical dramas, um, so I look forward to that it's coming. New Amsterdam, another medical drama. Um, season four will air and is set to come back when? Let's see. Uh, do we have any information on this? Of course not. Yes, that is to air to return. Just scheduled to return on Tuesday, September 21st. Is that what it said? Yep. Oh, it just says September. Yeah, Tuesday, September 21st. So, I know I have those two things to watch. We were watching um, uh, Manifest. And from the understanding I have, that has been canceled. My husband also enjoyed watching, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it, All Rise. He was loving that. That's been taken up. And from the understanding I have, that has been canceled. We loved watching 911. I did not like the uh, Texas 911. I really just did not like that. Um, my husband was watching it, I think, a little bit, but uh, wasn't, wasn't feeling it. Um, my husband also liked watching Prodigal Son. That has also been canceled. Some of these things were in negotiations with Netflix or Hulu to pick them up, and I don't know if they um, decided on what they were going to do, if anything. So, all right, so <clears throat> that's my Hulu, I mean, my Netflix lineup. Now we've got Hulu. For me and Hulu, I have the free um, membership. It comes with my phone, you know, um, T-Mobile, Sprint. I get it with that, so I don't get to see a lot of the things. Um, but for me, Hulu is more for me to listen to because they show a lot of the classic things that I miss, you know, I watched growing up, um, Designing Women, Golden Girls, Wings, <clears throat> um, Dharma and Grey, you know, Mindless TV, Last Man Standing, uh, I Love Lucy, The Wondering Years, that nostalgia, that's basically what it is for me, um, 
I really enjoy watching those, you know, listening to those things, and it kind of takes me back. And there's a lot of things on there that you can't get on Netflix or, or Hulu, or I mean, uh, Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime. <clears throat> so a lot of times I'll fall asleep listening to one of those because I've already seen them, so I kind of remember what happened. I love Reba. I, I always love watching Reba. Um, Mom, you know, that's one of them. Anybody who's seen Mom, the comedy, um, no, I, I, I try, sometimes I think it's funny. I, I, that's what I have to be in the mood for. I really have to be in the mood for being able to sit through that because, you know, some of it's just really annoying. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it, that's a hard one. There's seven, se seven seasons and there's like 20, between 20 and 22 episodes per season. Um, that's one of those things where I need noise to fall asleep sometimes. Well, I need noise all the time, but sometimes I just want something that is going to put me to sleep like really quick and that's it. It's noise and I'm asleep. I'm like due to the boredom or the, I just need to hear something, but I can't stand it. That's something that helps put me to sleep quite quickly. Um, I always liked wings. That was always one of those fun things, you know, based in, <clears throat> what is it, Alaska. Um, the characters were hilarious. Um, this was, you know, from, gosh, what was it, 1993. It had Tim Daly, Stephen Weber, and Crystal Bernard. Got a kick out of that show. So I, I listened to that. Um, just a lot of old ones. Cheers, Will and Grace, the Dick Van Dyke Show, the Brady Bunch. So I, I watch some of those things. Um, usually, I really don't watch anything that's new on here. Um, I like, you know, MASH. I was always one that loved MASH. So if you're, if you're looking for, you know, childhood memories, nostalgia TV, classic comedy, uh, Hulu is the place to go. I also do have Peacock. Um, again, there's some shows on there that you can't find anywhere else. I love to watch Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, Leave It to Beaver's actually on there. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, you can watch the Olympics on there. And none of these are pro, um, I'm not sponsored by them. I know they don't even know I'm talking about them. This is just for, you know, food for thought for anybody who is just trying to find something to watch on TV. I see a lot of people post on Facebook, you know, what are you watching or what are you listening to when you diamond paint? So these here are just some you know, food for thought suggestions. If you're looking for something to watch um, and where you can watch them, that's where um, this is. So and you your TV shows on Peacock, Peacock and is like $6.99 a month. Um, I don't know what Hulu is because, like I said, I don't pay for that. And then Netflix, depending on which you have. I have a two screen and I pay, I think, $11.99 a month for it because my son watches as well. Um, but, you know, TV shows on Peacock, you know, they've got Parks and Recreation, they've got The Office, um, Bernie Mac Show, Modern Family, you know, these are for your comedies, um, Rutherford Falls, Brooklyn Nine, Keenan, you know, Two and a Half Men, which I listened to the whole series in my sleep, because I put that on and just let it run consistently and constantly. King of Queens, Roseanne, you know, Everybody Hates Chris, PJs, and Standout dramas. There's Yellowstone, which my son likes to watch. Yellowstone, Bates Motel is on there. Doctor Death, which that I do want to see. That is a um, Peacock original that has Alec Baldwin. Um, so that that is um, one that I will be um, watching. And I think I don't remember. Is it a movie or is it a series? It is a it, it, It's going to be a series. How many seasons, I don't know. How many episodes, of course, I mean, this is just now coming out. 
Downton Abbey's on there. Uh, you've got your, all of your Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, Criminal Intent, your basic, your original Law and Order. I think that the new one um, that came out, I forget what it's called. I think that's going to be on there. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I got here as far as Netflix, Hulu, and Peacock. I've mentioned a lot of times about my podcasts that I like to listen to. I listen to my podcasts on CastBox through Google, through the Play Store. Um, and I think they might have that one on Apple as well. I think you almost find that one anywhere. But um, my favorite true crime podcasts are... Um, it's true crime, a true crime, a true, it's called Crime, Count, crime Countdown. It's a podcast, it's a Spotify original. It is a, um, the same people that do the Morbid, which is next one I was going to tell you about, Morbid um, podcast. It is, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, there's a website, there we go. There are two women. I think it's a, it's like a niece, an aunt, an aunt and a niece, but they were kind of, it's a fam, there's a family dynamic there. But um, with Morbid, they, their names are Al Elena and Ash. They have a Facebook, I mean, they have a Instagram page. The Facebook page, from understanding that I have, that is not theirs. Someone created it, but it is actually not theirs, if I remember correctly. But they do have Instagram, and it is called Morbid, as well as they do have Facebook, I mean, uh, YouTube, where um, they will post their videos on their podcast first. You don't see them. It's just them talking. Um, they have new cases that they present you know, multiple times. It's like once a week for their actual cases that they're talking about. And when I say new cases, I mean each week they have a case that they discuss. Um, one week is um, Elena and the other one is Ash. Um, if you want unfiltered true crime they are your girls. I absolutely love them. They're hilarious um, in their personalities. Um, if you are more along the lines that you can't handle um, heavy language, then this might not be a podcast for you. Um, but I love listening to them. They, they're, they're hilarious. They actually do live shows. Right now, um, with everything that's going on, their live shows are being done virtually. You can probably purchase tickets for their show. If you want to go to their um, Google, I mean their um, Instagram, just type in um, at morbid uh, at morbid, and it'll bring it up. And they list their um, showtimes. They do have a website, so you can check them out. But they also. Um, forgetting which symbol I'm on. They also um, have the crime countdown where each week they pick like a serial killer and they discuss that and discuss that serial killer. So I listen to them. I like most Notorious also on um, the true, on the crime box. Sure, you can Google or I mean, uh, go to any any place that you listen to your true crime, whether it's Spotify or Crime Bot, or I mean, um, oh my goodness sakes, I just told you the name of this, but then I can't remember what it's called, the uh, uh, cast box, and you can find true crime, and just type in serial killers, or true crime, or cold case, and that is another one that I listen to, there's also another one called cold case. 
then I listen. And these are all free. You don't have to pay for the subscription. And they have Serial Killers. They have one called Radio Randall. There is Dark Air with Terry Carnation. There's the Crime Junkie, Small Town Murder. I listen to all of those um, podcasts. I actually need to see her real quick. Yes, uh, Morbid. Actually, Ash and Alina actually put up two new episodes that I am behind on and that I just actually came up one on the 31st and one on the 3rd. So I know what I will be doing once I am finished recording this video. Okay, so what's next? Bless you. Sorry, anybody heard my husband? He just sneezed. All right, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> so now on to the books. And we are an hour and a half in, and um, you know what, to be honest, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the books for my next video. That way it will give me time to go ahead and get them all downloaded onto my tablet, and maybe I'll be able to bring out some information on them. So if there's anything, um, if you have any suggestions, things um, for me to watch on Netflix or even... Amazon Prime, any series is, put those in the um, comment boxes. Or um, if there's true crime that you listen to, go ahead and pop that in the description box too. Because I'm, I mean, in the uh, comments below, I'm always looking for something to listen to. I don't really like to listen to music while I'm diamond painting. Um, I prefer, you know, a podcast or a series because I need something that I'm sorry I keep bumping this that way I'm you know because sometimes it's like maybe I'm doing a section per episode or I, I don't know music for me I need I listen to music when I'm cleaning when I'm when I'm being active um, I'm actually going to be creating taking the songs that I have in my library on Spotify, and I'm gonna break them up into clean, you know, a, a list of songs for when I'm cleaning the house. And pretty soon, when the weather cools off, especially in the early mornings, and then um, in the evenings, like nighttime, when the sun is actually down and it's falling asleep, and the weather cools down, I'm hoping to start walking again. Um, I started that 90-day challenge that everybody was doing, and the heat just got to be too much. It just got to be way too much. I couldn't do it. And even with the walking around the house, it's not, I wasn't getting enough steps in to really make it make sense. Then I started having problems with my hip, so that kind of has put me down with my back and hip that I wasn't able to be as active as I wanted to be. So therefore, I kind of bailed out of that quietly. But once these temperatures go away, um, I will be getting up in the morning because <clears throat> I, right now, my son has to be at work at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. I usually get up about 5.45. Um, if he has to be at work at 7, I get up at 5.45. If he has to be at work at 8, I try to get up at like between 6.15 and 6.45 um, so I can get the coffee in me. But when the temperatures cool down, I'll get up and I'll go ahead and walk in the morning. And that will give me something to listen to, you know, while I'm walking. And then in the evening, I'll take walks because I'll take my dog for longer walks. Right now, he, he gets a walk that go out, go potty, get in. It's too hot on his feet. It's too hot for him. He starts panting right away. And it's too hot for me as well. So I look forward to the fall temperatures where I can go out and do more walking, <clears throat> both in the morning and the evening in the morning and the evenings. And I'm going to want to have kind of separate music to listen to because if I'm going to listen to music while I'm cleaning, I'm not going to want to constantly hear the same songs when I take that walk in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Or in the evening. So I'm going to separate my list out that way. Um, 
Also, when I go to bed at night, I mentioned that I need to have some kind of noise. And a lot of, I, I can't always watch it on my tablet because I can't to have the um, screen lit up in my face. Even if I dim the screen, there's still too much light. And I also can't have it too loud because of course, you know, there's other people in the house. I was sleeping with my AirPods in. I would put one in um, the, because I'm a side sleeper, so you know, one ear's pressed to the pillow and I can't have that AirPod like that. That hurts. So the side that I was sleeping on, I would not have an AirPod in. The side, the ear that was up in the air, <clears throat> you know, facing um, up, I'd have an AirPod in it. And trust me, that was weird because in the middle of the night, each time I move, when I roll over, yeah, I fully wake up because my butt, I have to turn just a certain way. I have to be very careful on how I turn because of my back. So I have to fully wake up <coughs> because I have a pillow between my knees. I have a pillow under my arm. I have a pillow against my back. So when I wake up to go to the bathroom or roll over, it, it's a process. I have to rearrange the pillows. I've got to roll over. i got to set my pillows right. I'm a hot mess. But when I would roll over, then I would take the AirPod out of that ear, put it back in its charging case, get the other one, put it in the opposite ear, and roll. Yeah. And when that happens, that's why I very, get very little sleep. Because when that happens two, three, four times a night or more, I'm, I'm losing about 15 minutes of sleep, literally in the process. Then it takes another 10 or 15 minutes to fall back to sleep, only to have maybe an hour later of going through this again. So it was just, I was actually getting, my ears were getting sore from having the AirPods in. So I decided that, yeah, we can't do that anymore. Um, I know there's, you know, um, wireless head, you know, wireless ear, buds that you can put in that are very comfortable, that are very small, that people sleep in all the time. I can't, I've seen the prices of them. Yeah, I can't afford that. I, I mean, I just, to spend that kind of money, I just can't see it. I just can't. So I have an Echo Dot. I have the show on my nightstand. So as my clock and all that stuff, but I actually have an Echo Dot as well, and it's the round one that I have on my nightstand that I will turn on ambient noise. And, you know, there's certain only certain things that you can listen to for free, but they have a premium plan where they have a bunch of different sounds that you can listen to. It's like $1.80 a month. Absolutely worth it for somebody who cannot sleep without assistance. So um, I listen to thunderstorms with heavy rain or um, a winter storm. We actually hear the wind whistling through. Those are what I fall asleep listening to. Um, and it works. I take my, my medication at bedtime. I have to get my ice packs all out. <laughs> get myself situated and ask her to turn on my ambient noise. I pick the noise that I want. I lay down and on a good night, I'm usually asleep within 10, 15 minutes. On a bad night, it's usually a half hour, 45 minutes. But during that half hour, 45 minutes, I'm very relaxed. I may not be able to drift off to sleep, but I'm very relaxed. I'm very calm. My mind's not wandering. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just listening to those noises. So I absolutely love that. And right now, we can't close our bedroom doors upstairs because it, with, air, with the being so hot, we don't have um, air conditioner vents in our hallway. So it's going to make our hall extremely warm. And it's going to cause air conditioners to run more often. So fortunately, since we can't close the door, 
with me having my fan running, my son and my husband can't hear the noise, you know, whatever I'm listening to in their respective rooms. When I have to turn the fan off because of, you know, it's too, you know, we don't need fans running anymore. That might make this a little more different. I may have to try and find something to put in my ears until um, winter comes where, or cooler temperatures come where we're actually turning the heat on. Because once we turn the heat on, then I can actually close the door. Um, and it won't matter. So I just want to make sure that my husband and my son are getting sleep and not getting disrupted because I need noise. Both of them sleep. Well, my son, he sleeps fine with or without noise. My husband, on the other hand, he needs it pure, pitch black, and quiet to sleep at night. He can fall asleep watching TV, but when he goes to bed at night, it has to be quiet and it has to be dark. So, um, yeah. So there you have it. You know, like, you know what I've watched, what I want to watch, um, what I've tried to watch or I'm not quite sure of. You know what I like to listen to um, when it comes to my music. Let me actually give you my playlist on another video as well. Um, planning dinner for tomorrow because we did finish our pasta tonight. Thank God because I am over the pasta. Um, tomorrow I want hot dogs. So I'm going to have hot dogs and um, Bush's baked beans and I'm going to get a candy container, macaroni salad from the deli. Um, my son and my husband are going to have the beans and the macaroni salad as well, but they're going to have smoked sausage. I can't eat it. It's too difficult if I, is it skin, the outer skin gets a little tough or crunchy and then I struggle with it. So yeah, that's what we're going to have for dinner tomorrow. And then I'm going to get something out of the freezer for Thursday for them because I don't know what Thursday is going to hold for me for my orthodontist appointment. Um, since I'm getting an adjustment, my mouth's probably going to be sore, so it'll probably be soup or mashed potatoes or something that doesn't require a lot of chewing. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So I hope you all had a wonderful Tuesday and, you know, day and evening. Hope you stay cool. Hope you're getting a lot of crafting done. I'm... With everything that's gone on this week, I really haven't gotten as much on this work that I wanted to get finish, finished. I did mention in my last video that I did have diamond paintings coming that was sent to me by the person that I'm doing this for. Two of them, she sent me their squares for me to do for her. And the other two she purchased for me as a thank you for doing these for her. So. They arrived today, so I think I'm going to do an unboxing. Well, I've already took them out of the main box, but I haven't opened them. So maybe tomorrow I will go ahead and try and get um, a couple videos out, one being my books and do a video for books, a video for my song list, and maybe a video for the unboxing of the diamond paintings. So, but I'm go ahead and I'm finish this for the night. I gotta go check on my son, get him to bed because he needs to get up in the morning for work. So I need to get him his medicine and all that. And I am tired myself, so I'm going to clean this up, put it away, turn everything off, and I am going to go grab my ice packs, my ice water, and I'm going to go lay in bed and do some reading and try and relax and go to sleep early. So, 
Thank you for coming and spending some time with me tonight, listening to me ramble. Hopefully some of the information I gave you as far as movies um, and TV series is you're interested in. If these are some that you've watched, um, please don't give me, don't, don't give away any spoilers, but give me your opinions. Tell me what you think of them. Um, and anything that I haven't mentioned, maybe give me some suggestions. I'm always interested in, you know, finding something new to watch or podcasts to listen to. If you are new to my channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit that little bell next to the subscribe and click to get all of my notifications or all yeah all of my notifications as I put up new videos. If you are already a subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and coming to listen to my um, rambling. I greatly so appreciate your support. I keep but I gotta. We got to make some changes to where I have my arm for my cam because bumping this is annoying me. So I know it's got to be annoying you as well. Um, I can go ahead and have some links put in here for some of the podcasts. Um, this will not go up tonight as I hope. So I'm recording this on Tuesday, but it will not go up until a late Wednesday afternoon, early evening, because my son has to do all that technical stuff. So when I record the videos for Wednesday, they probably won't go up until Thursday. But um, I do have a Buy Me a Coffee account. If you would consider making a donation, I would appreciate it. It's not expected, but it uh, is much appreciated. That link is in the description box below. I've had many people ask me for my PayPal account so they can make a donation since I'm not monetized. They would like to be able to help support the channel in any way they can. So that is also in the description box below, along with other, um, my Gmail, my email, my Facebook, my, er, my Instagram, my email, my Facebook. So go ahead and check all that out. Appreciate your support. Thanks for stopping and see me. Till next time, guys, have a great night. Bye, everyone.